I try to pick up a few episodes of every new anime when the new season starts, just for good measure. Often, I'll drop after like episode two or three and decide what is and what isn't for me this season. But for Heavenly Delusion, our anime for today's video, something was just like, drawing me in, some deeper mystery, some weird uncertainty, some murky secret that was lying just beneath the surface. On its front, the story is an interesting bilateral adventure in a dystopian hellscape. But dig a bit deeper, and something's unsettling. Then, around episode eight, I solved one of the mysteries, and boom, it was off to the races. I didn't just get hooked on this anime, I caught up to where the manga currently is, which will probably be where the show ends up in like 2026, if it even keeps going. But what can this story about monsters and lost children possibly have to do about our walk with Jesus? Let's talk about it. Folks, welcome to Checkpoint Church, where nerds, geeks, and gamers come together to talk about faith, games, and an anime that's basically just more Akira. Sign me up. Akira. I'm your nerd pastor, Nate. If you like these weekly dives, be sure to sub, hit that bell, and find out when our next one drops. Folks, as always, we start these with our scripture. Our scripture for today is coming from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19, verses 16 through 22. We'll be reading from the NRSV UE. That's my preferred translation. It's what's going to be on the screen. No guest letter just this week, so I will be presenting the gospel for us. Then someone came to Jesus and said, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There's one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. Also, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, I've kept all these. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you wish to be perfect, go. Sell your possessions, give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. When the young man heard this word, he went away grieving, for he had many possessions. So my goal with this one is to spoil as little as possible because I want you to watch this show. If you're a fan of shows like The Last of Us, books like Station Eleven, or the iconic anime Akira, I think you'd really dig this show and the mysterious web that it seems to be weaving. Plus, if I get you to watch this show, maybe it'll get picked up for future seasons. <coughs> but I do have to at least give a pitch for why this show matters and why the story it's telling is relevant to Christians. So this anime follows two different somehow connected plot lines. In our A story, we have Mar Maru and Kiriko. Maru is a mysterious boy with an even more mysterious power. Kiriko is a delivery person protecting Maru while she delivers him to his destination of heaven. Where is heaven? I don't know. Must be some kind of heavenly delusion. <laughs> The Japan that this duo are venturing around is utterly destroyed by some mysterious phenomena that happened 15 years prior. There are pockets of civilization, but also just vast landscapes of violent scavengers and scumbags. Amidst the wreckage and evil human beings, there are also mysterious monsters named Hiriko, named after the mythological god of the same name, who was cast aside by its parents, who were also gods, also God, God, godparents? Anyway, this casting aside was due to deformations. Hiroko had no bones, arms, or legs. You would think being a god would set apart a better life than that, but it must just be some kind of heavenly delusion! <laughs> anyway, these Hiroko are pretty vicious and have some very impressive powers, but remember that cool power I mentioned Maru has? Yeah, he can reach inside the hearts of the Hiroko and actually kill them. Not something many others can achieve. However, is a power that can only kill really a power? Or is it just some kind of heavenly del Okay. I'll stop. So that's our A story. But every now and again, we're thrown into a place of pure perfection. Some kind of strange institute for gifted youths. The headmaster's even in a wheelchair, but she is not played by Sir Patrick Stewart. These kids are in a strange sort of facility where they are well-kept and educated and safe from whatever dystopian future is outside. We learn a little bit about the group, some more than others, but mostly we learn about Tokyo, who looks exactly like our A story protagonist, Maru. Huh. Weird. Probably just a coincidence, right? Anyway, things are pretty perfect in this spot until, strangely, one day during class, Tokyo gets a message on her learning tablet that says, do you want to go outside of the outside? Whoa, pretty ominous, right? She's thrown off and attempts to tell someone, but when she looks back at the message, it's nowhere to be seen. Frazzled and wanting to understand what exists outside the walls of the facility, Tokyo begins to think and explore and do a little detective work to find out what's going on. And along the way, she learns maybe things aren't as perfect as she thinks they are. That's right. It's some kind of heavenly delusion. It's here where we find the first thread of mystery for the story. What is outside of the outside? And does Tokyo actually want to know? Are things really better? on the inside of some supermax level prison disguised as a school? Same goes for Maru and Kiriko. Do they actually want to find this mysterious heaven place? 
What if it's far from the heaven they seem to think it is? What if it doesn't even exist? Questions like these are what drives the show forward, and you have no clue. Let me assure you, you have no clue what's coming next. So please, watch this show, enjoy the mystery. However, this mysterious choice dilemma our main characters are facing isn't just the driving point of the show, it's also an important question that Jesus poses to the believers as well. With that, let's take a quick look at our passage for today. This passage from the Gospel of Matthew actually draws from a much larger section that continues in on the concepts presented, but it's this conversation that we're looking at that kicks off a larger discussion. So. A wealthy dude comes up to Jesus knowing full well who Jesus is at this point and asks, hey, what can I do to inherit eternal life? You know, just a basic water cooler icebreaker question. Jesus retorts with a very wise Pharisee teacher Jesus answer. What do you mean? You know what's good, just keep the commandments. The young man beckons further, which ones do you mean? Surprisingly, Jesus continues the conversation and responds, which I think shows that this young man must have at least been earnest in the question because he does choose to respond. He responds, don't murder, steal, bear false witness, honor ma and pa, love your neighbor as yourself. Young guy was ready for this answer. Yeah, I've done all that, Jesus, and I'm still not getting it. What do I lack? Jesus gives him what he asks for. If you wish to be perfect, go, sell your possessions, give the money to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Finally, having heard the hard truth, the young man walks away grieving because he had many possessions. He wasn't ready to commit. He wasn't ready for the truth. I love this passage for many reasons. First off, I love the challenge of going above and beyond. Even when we do everything right on paper, there's still like a sense of lack, a thing we still prioritize over everything else that gives us a sense of this something lacking even when all the other boxes are checked off. But I also love this side of Jesus. This is not the first time that Jesus has done something like this. He says, follow me many, many times throughout the gospel. Drop your nets, follow me. Deny yourself, take up the cross, follow me. Hey, Matthew, manning your tax booth, your livelihood, leave it, follow me. Peter, give me your entire life of service until you can't even dress yourself anymore, follow me. Let the dead bury their dead, follow me. The truth is revealed in the repetition here. There is a common denominator in these sentences. Do the thing, follow me. Give this up, follow me. Lose yourself, follow me. The truth of following Jesus in any kind of form of perfection is an act of sacrificing the thing that we truly value. And in each scenario, I see Jesus asking the person to give up one thing, control. Money is control. A job is control. Our lives are examples of control. We like to be in control, but Jesus says, give it up and follow me. Instead, follow the example laid out by the grace and peace and humility that Christ offers in the Gospels. I think it's here where we get mixed up because the call isn't just about selling everything. You don't magically become something miraculous because you sacrifice money or a job. It's when you're willing to give up the thing that all of these things symbolize, control that you have over your life. Jesus wants to be the whole thing, not just some of the thing. The good news here is that, as Checkpoint is more than evidence of, following Jesus doesn't mean you just give up the things you enjoy. They just can't control you. Jesus is the vision, the focus, the controller, the one in charge. And in Jesus, we still get to enjoy things and spend our lives in a space of love and goodness. But the crux that the young man can't understand is that even if we're doing everything right, it is our heart and our focus that defines who we are to Jesus. It's here where heavenly delusion comes into play. When Tokyo first sees that message, that's a symbol that the control has been disrupted. These children are in a literally controlled environment and suddenly there's an offer to go outside of the outside. On one hand, this threatens the greater control of the facility, but it also threatens the control of Tokyo. She doesn't know what's outside those walls either. Her control over her next breath, her next meal, her comfy bed, those are in jeopardy by this innocuous message. She chooses to explore it and look truth in the face. Will it bite her back or give her the gift of freedom? Well, you gotta watch the show to find out. Fortunately, we don't have to wait for the end of the show to find out the answer to the real life question. We know Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. Jesus is the outside of the outside, the revelation of truth and goodness. There is only eternal life through him and only peace and purpose through him. Everything else is just a facade, a fake bit of grandeur, dare I say, a heavenly illusion. But what does any of this actually mean for us today? I would take time to consider what Jesus might ask you if you were the young man approaching him about this truth, where do you find yourself to be controlling? What is competing for a life with Jesus? What can you do to let go of that? What do you need to sell or give to the poor in order to actually follow Jesus? 
for real. If you're feeling unsatisfied in your walk with Jesus, if something doesn't feel right, then that may be a telltale sign you're holding control over Jesus somewhere along the line. And the first step to actually following Jesus in an honest way is to drop that control. But don't just assume that selling all your things are what you really need. Explore what you hold on to most tightly. Determine how you can best stretch yourself there to let Jesus in to that space. If you wanna explore that with us here at Checkpoint, the door is always open. We'd love to have that conversation with you. Because remember, whether you're a mysterious child, a Hiroko monster, or just some <laughs> you're always welcome here at Checkpoint Church. Folks, thank you so much for watching this video. I so appreciate you taking time out of your busy days to join us on these nerdy deep dives. If you want more of what Checkpoint Church has to offer, you can always join us where we're streaming over on Twitch. Typically, every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. I will not be around this Thursday, but you can still join us on Monday or Tuesday. Or we're around 24-7 over on our Discord server. We'd love to have you in that space. I'll link both those down below. Hey, if you watched this far in the video, odds are you probably liked this one. If this is one of your favorites or an anime that you're really enjoying this season, let me know by clicking that like button uh, that you want more of this kind of thing. If you want more videos, to watch like this one might I recommend last season's anime hit about childhood Bochi the Rock uh, I really enjoy Bochi I miss Bochi I hope we get more of Bochi because man that was just one of my favorite shows if you want another hopeless childhood story told in the form of a video game this time you could go watch Amori and learn a little bit more about how maybe we might be able to find some hope in the midst of hopelessness. Or if you want another post-apocalyptic uh, dystopian future story that explores relationships that go wrong, you could go watch our video on The Last of Us. Any of those will be great watches. Thanks for looking for more. Hey, quick question for you. What is some kind of childhood belief that you've since learned was wrong and now it's like changed you, changed how you see things? It's a bit silly, but I really believed as a child there was a danger in quicksand. Like I thought I was just gonna be finding quicksand every like street corner that I took. I, I thought I needed to be prepared to like combat this natural combatant, but I have yet to ever see quicksand before and I'm not sure if I ever will. So drop down in the comments below. Let me know what's something you once believed that now you've learned is not true. With that, we're gonna end this video as we always do with our three things that we believe be true about every single one of you out there. Number one, we believe that God loves you, like really, really loves you. Number two, we love you, we want community with you. That's what we're doing here through these nerdy deep dives, through our Twitch streams, through our Discord community. And number three, we believe that you, yes, you matter. You are a person of sacred worth. The world is a better place, why? Because you are in it. Folks, with that, until the next time that I see ya, be well, whether that be on Twitch tomorrow, whether it be on Discord right now, or same time, same place next week for another of these nerdy deep dives. I look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye!